if you see this little dude here with who's thinking, that means I want you to pause the video at a certain point. You're going to probably work out a problem on your own. And this is a signal to you that you're going to need a graphing calculator. Okay, pretty basic. Uh, so let's get into what a function machine is. Okay, this is really easy stuff. That's what's nice. One of the easier lessons of the whole year because you should already know this. So we're just going to kind of go through some things. I'm also going to teach you some calculator skills in this lesson that you may not know. So what goes into this function is going to change when it comes out. Maybe change, maybe it doesn't. But what comes out depends on what go, gets put in. What comes out depends on what gets put in. So for example, here you got a picture of Mr. Brust. And if you take Brust and you put him into this function machine, what's going to happen? And what comes out? Steve Urkel at your service. Brust goes in, Urkel comes out. Let's take Mr. Kelly. Kelly goes into the function machine. And then what comes out? <gasps> Another Urkel. Now this is okay. A function machine can do that. You can have both Kelly and Brust go into it and come out as the same thing. What what has to happen though is if I put Kelly in, Kelly always has to come out as Urkel. If he ever comes out as anything else, it's broken. So for example, here let's take Sullivan. If Sullivan goes in, what comes out? Excellent! I win! I like it when I win! Mr. Crocker, the guy from Timmy Turner, if you don't know who that guy is. And if we took Sullivan again, so let's take Sullivan and just plug him in again, then what is it got to be? It should be Mr. Crocker, but look, it's not. He came out as somebody else. Any last words, puny earth boy? Uh, I don't even remember this guy's name. The tough guy, you know, from Timmy, Timmy Turner. This is not a function. Sullivan coming out as two separate things, both as Mr. Crocker and the tough dude, then... He, this can't be a function. It's broken because you got to be the same thing every time. So, for example, here you have a little table. Let's just fill these out real quick. If I plug in a negative 2 as an input and I get a 25, I'm making numbers up here. 25, then a 0, then a negative 4. Now, watch this last one here. This negative 2, I plug it in. What does it have to be? It's got to be a 25. Uh oh. This is not a function. So, we would write underneath this, we're just, I want you to write down that it is not a function because of that value right there. So if I was specifically explaining it, I would show that the input of negative 2 is coming out as two separate outputs. So it's broken, not a function. Next one, negative 56 comes out a 4. We plug in a 1 half, oh, it also comes out a 4. And the 0 comes out a 4, and the 1 comes out a 4. So in this case, they're all the same thing. That's okay. What would matter is if I have a 1 here and a 1 somewhere else, if it came out something else, then it would not be a function. This one is a function. Next we have these values here. So the only thing we really need to worry about is this 13 on the top and the bottom. So let's see, we get a negative 54, a 12, a 0 0.2. So if I plug in this 13, this one needs to be a negative 54. And if it's not, then it's not a function. And it is a negative 54, so this is a function as well. Okay, so hopefully that helps you know with just tables what you're doing with input and output. Now let's get some other names for input and output. You can also call it independent because input and independent I'm trying to help you remember this is the independent variable the input is the independent the output is the dependent just remember the in in another name for it is domain and range that should be kind of familiar to you domain is the input range is the output and X and Y we often use these X's and Y's it does not have to be X's and Y's we're gonna have lots of different variables we'll practice some of that today but uh, Often we do X's and Y's when we're graphing things. And I just remember that it's alphabetical. So D comes before R, and X comes before Y. Alphabetical just to remember their order. That doesn't work over here with the independent and the dependent, because you got to remember the in and the in goes together. Okay, so we got some names down, so you can refer to those. Again, hopefully this is just some review, but maybe it's clarifying it for you if you've forgotten some of this stuff. So where do we put the input variable? This is called function notation, f of x. It is not f times x, it is f of x. We always get some students, even at the pre-calculus level, who still have that confused. So uh, it just means we have some, exp over here we're going to have an expression, and it's going to have some x's in it. So you have, this thing is called the name of the function. This is the input variable. That's why this here is called input variable. And what comes out of the function machine is the output variable or expression. So for example, 
if I have this here and I plug in Kelly, Mr. Kelly gets plugged into the function, then what came out <laughs> was Urkel. Oh man. If I had more time, I'd have put Kelly's face like in there, but it's with glasses, but that's just funny to me. Oh, Urkel, okay. So that's how function notation works. Here we go with our first example. Let's take x squared minus x plus one. And you, this means that if 2 is the input variable, then you just plug a 2 into wherever there used to be an x. That's all of this is. And then you simplify, and you get f of 2 equals 3, and that is our final answer there. Pause if you need to write that down, uh, if you don't have it yet. Next, let's take f of 2x minus 1. What is f of 2x minus 1? This means we plug a 2x minus 1 into each spot that had an x. So now it's 2x minus 1 quantity squared minus 2x minus 1. And here's where kids will make mistakes. What is this? Some kids are going to go, oh, this is 4x squared minus 1. Or maybe they'll think plus 1 because it's squaring, like squaring like that. No, 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 no. Don't do that. This is what it's supposed to be. It's two of them. A squared this squared means that there are two of those 2x minus 1's. So we're going to write it out twice. And then you have to oh, multiply, multiply, distribute, distribute everything out. You get that big mess. And then you have to here distribute the negative. You get this mess. And then you combine like terms. And there we go. Okay, so pause this now if you need to kind of understand. I don't want to have to go through exactly how to multiply out expressions or distribute negatives. Okay, that's not, at this point, you should be good with that. If you need some extra help, then let's see your teacher on that one. Okay, here. What if you got some weird symbol like a happy face? That just means, again, you plug it in to wherever there was an x. So happy face squared minus happy face plus 1. It just becomes that. That's your answer. Next on our lesson, we're doing some calculator tricks. You definitely want to grab a graphing calculator if you can. Now, my instruction is going to be with a TI-84. So if you have a TI-83 or a TI-84, it will be just exactly what I'm doing here. If you have another graphing calculator, you'll have to spend some time looking through your manual to figure out what it is that I'm doing. But this is just to help you evaluate things at a faster pace. So first thing to do is we need to get this function into our calculator. So what you do is you go here to this y equals button and you go into, let's type in 3x squared. Now here's, there's two ways to do x squared. I like to do this, xx, because that's x times x. It's just faster for some reason for me. I just go 3xx minus 0 0.2x plus 37. All right, there's my function. Hit enter, and now I have my function in there. So now I can, the, fir the first thing we're gonna do is practice this trace thing. All right, let's look at the graph. But before we look at the graph, how about we all get the same exact window by hitting zoom, and then option number six will give us a standard window, and that will make it so we all see the same thing. Now, I see nothing. Well, the reason is because this y-intercept here is at 37, and the parabola, because this is a parabola, it's x squared, is opening up. So that means my window maximum, let's go to my, my y-max, right now it's only at 10. If I go up to 40, then at least I could see part of it. Let's see what happens when I go up to 40. I can just see the very tip of it there. So let's go window max. Let's go even larger. Let's, how about 100 and see what that does for us. There we go. That's nice and pretty. So now the top is 100, and that's 37 right there, the y-intercept. So when we trace, hit this trace button, this is what we're doing. We're looking at trace, and then if you just kind of go over here until you get to x value of 2, Thing is 1.9, 2.12, that's close. We want to be exact. So what you do is while you're tracing, all you have to do is just hit the number 2, and here it shows up, x equals 2. Hit enter, and bloop, it jumps there, 48.6. OK, so I'm not giving you any extra notes on this. I'm just showing you how to do it. So that's something that you need to practice on your own to do. That is how we do the trace. OK, so done with that one. The answer was 48.6. Now let's do the table ask. So let's figure out what's negative 3.4 on the table ask. This one's really cool. Love this one. Um, let's see. If we go over here to the table, most of you will have something that looks like this with a bunch of x values. We could go up and down, and then we could look for it. The problem is I need to see what negative 3.4 is. So if I go up here, there's negative 3, there's negative 4. So my answer is somewhere in between this, but I don't really know exactly. So what you can do, this is great, follow along. See the table set up here? So if I go second window, that goes to setting up my table. 
and instead of having the independent be an automatic value, I'm going to have the calculator ask for the independent, meaning ask for what x values I want to use. That's where this independent dependent comes in. So if I click that, and then go back to the second table, so let's go back to our table, then it's just sitting there waiting for you. So I can go negative 3.4, enter, and bloop, it gives you 72.36. Isn't that cool? You just enter whatever number you want. Like, let's say I wanted to know, plug in a 45, plug in a negative 2.9. See, it gives you the Y value right there. So that's a pretty nice feature for this one. So 72.36. The downside, let me give you one warning. The downside of the table ask, see how you've got these, uh, these borders here? If you can, the number can only be so big, so it's going to round. You can't make the numbers really, really big here. It's, it's, uh, that's a limitation you have on table ask. But for the smaller numbers, this works great. All right, last one, function notation. And that is another cool one that a lot of people don't know. That is this. Let's plug in a 107. Well, we could do this, 107, just in the table ask. But this is a, a perfect example of where the table ask doesn't work because it rounded our answer. Go back to our main screen by hitting second mode. We'll quit and bring us back. Now we're going to plug in a 107 using function notation. You ready for this? Uh, which one is it? Oh yeah, stat. Stat button. New. Um, oh yeah, vars, vars, the variable button. Vars. Then we go over to this y vars. Scroll over to this menu, and we want to use the function that is in y1. So we hit enter, and now it pulls this up. Now if I use that, and I type 107 and close my parentheses, this is function notation. It's going to take the function we had and plug in a 107. Hit enter. Bloop, there we go. 34,362.6. So again, you hit the VARS button, scroll over to the Y VARS, choose your function, whatever one you have it plugged into, hit enter, and then you can just kind of type in whatever number you want. It's 56.8 if you want there. Okay, nice little trick. And then you could hit second enter and just bring it up again. Second enter, bring it up again. Go and change whatever you need to change. All right, there's the end of our calculator tricks. Hopefully that helps you with being able to plug in some numbers quickly. It's a real nice one. Most of the time, table ask will be good, but you might find these other ones helpful as well, depending on what you're working on. I'm going to start speeding up a bit on my notes just because we want to get through this. This is pretty easy stuff. Let's get through it. So we're now going to be looking at how you can compare ordered pairs with a table of values in a t-chart. So if you have a bunch of x's and a bunch of y's, this 3, negative 5 is exactly the same thing as just having this ordered pair. But that is something you probably already know. So we're going to go negative, ooh, that was bad, negative 7 thirds and 16. Here we get 0 0.8 and 0. Okay, so this is something you're familiar with. This might be one that you're not quite so good at, but basically function notation is just if the x value is a 3, then the y value is negative 5. That's function notation. It means exactly the same thing as this coordinate point. Okay, so what's funny is that sometimes I'll have students who see something like this, f of negative 7 thirds equals 16, and they start freaking out. Mr. Bean, I have no idea what this is, what is going on. And so then if you just rewrite it like an ordered pair, I'm like, that's all it is. It's just an x and a y. Okay, but pretty simple. 0 0.8 is the x, then the y value was a 0. That's function notation. And you have this phrase, depends on. It's exactly the same thing as saying, is a function of. So what we usually do is that the y value, typically the y value, depends on the x value. Because this is independent, this one is dependent. So the y value is a function of the x value, whatever those are in the scenario. So let's take a look at... Big old Mr. Bruss head, get out of the way. Mr. Bruss, cool shades, like it. Kind of scary mustache, buddy, but um, yeah, whatever. You guys should see. we got to take some pictures. Some, if I can do it, we'll get him to grow a mohawk again this year and see if we can take some pictures because he is crazy. All right, number of gray hairs on Mr. Bruss head is a function of the number of students in his Algebra 1 class. So that's the same... That's the same as saying that the number of gray hairs on Mr. Bruss' head depends on, that's the whole point of what I'm talking about right now, is that it depends on the number of students in his Algebra 1 class. So we're going to take some function g and say that s is the number of students in Mr. Bruss' Algebra 1 class. So g of s is the number of gray hairs on Mr. Bruss' head. What does the following mean? So if we had to put this into a sentence, I'm going to type this out and make this a little bit faster. So if, if I can actually do it, there we go. If 
there are 14 uh, students in Mr. Brust's Algebra 1 class, then he has 513 gray hairs. That is what this means. So you're going to have a few problems in which that this is exactly what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to type, write out what this notation means for the scenario that you're given. Okay, so then this one is pretty much just the same thing, but instead of 14 students, it's 27 students, and there would be 2,888 gray hairs. That's what we're doing for this. And the very last thing in our notes, and then we are finished, the vertical line test. You should all remember this one from all your algebra days. We're just making sure you understand this. And that is if you take a line, we're going to make this line. Whoop. If we take a vertical line and run it through the function, then it's got to only cross the function at one time. And right here, bloop, one, two, three. It's crossing three times. So this is not a function. Next one, here we have this line and as we are going down here we're checking to see is there anywhere where this thing crosses and no it does not cross twice it only crosses once the whole time so it is a function next one we got a circle well duh, obviously it's crossing twice so this is not a function because if you have one x value here it's going to spit out two y values and remember we can't have two separate y values and then we come here for every x value all the way across this thing every x value is one y value, it is a function. This thing as we go, oops, let's go this, as we go up and down and up and down and up and down, then that thing only crosses one time. There's nowhere it crosses twice, so it is a function. This is a piecewise function. This is a little trickier. When we get right here, it might look like it's crossing twice, but that's an open circle, and that is a closed circle, so it's only crossing once. But then when we get here, you see that's crossing twice. Here and here, so therefore this. Hi, I'm Timmy Turner, and I cheated on my math test.